welcome to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Devin. I'm Dan. And today is a very special episode because Dan's going to tell me about a movie he saw. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's it. Bye. <laughs> yeah. A ciao. No, the movie is uh, Prey, which just came out, uh, released uh, at least in uh, our area on Disney Plus. And. It was funny because the the end to the trilogy eat pray love. <laughs> no, <the> definitely. <laughs> it's the middle of the trilogy. The yeah. middle of the tri- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what this movie's about. <laughs> yeah. It was just funny because it was kind of a coincidence because I remember reading about this movie a while ago, but you know, didn't know any any details as per usual. And I saw how it was like it's like a predator anniversary it's like 35 years or something like that kind of thing so i was like oh you know what i haven't watched predator in a while so i watched predator one and two Mm -hmm. and then it got me thinking and i was like wait isn't there that prey movie coming out which is supposed to be a predator related thing so i looked on like movie chain websites and i was like why can't i see this movie like oh it's not a coming out yet whatever and then i saw a tweet about like oh we're gonna do a review on prey it's on digital and i was like what it is (laughs) so (laughs) Yeah, found out that it was on Disney Plus and then started watching it. And one of my complaints about it was that, unfortunately, I did watch this on Disney Plus because like two minutes in, I was like, why can't I see this in theater? Because it takes place in um, indigenous lands in like, you know, the northern Americas. And I was like, these are beautiful nature shots. Like I wanted the, that in big screen. You wanted that immersive feeling of being at a yeah. theater. Yeah. And in the in the forest with them and. And you know me, like, I really like sounds. And oh, yeah. My computer... Which is why you like Tenant so much. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, there's sounds and then dialogue. There's obviously the difference. I'm never going to not dunk on Tenant. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like, you know, I I don't have the ball in a sound system. So it's like, that's why I go to the theater as well. Anyway, that was one of my complaints was just I couldn't see it in theater. And I'll, I looked it up and essentially... What happened was, is they didn't release it in theaters because after its theater run, it would have to go to HBO, which then I guess would end up on HBO Max or whatever's going on there now. So I assume that that's like old deals that Disney still has to, you know, honor with 20th Century Fox properties, I think. So they just put it on Hulu and Disney Plus, which Disney owns. (laughs) Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder so, if the actors kind of get mad about that, because don't they get, like, a certain amount of revenue? Like, isn't that what that whole Scarlett Johansson lawsuit with Disney mm-hmm. was about? I was going to say, that's probably for, like, bigger actors and bigger projects. Like, these are mostly unknowns and stuff like that, so they probably don't get, like, a points on the back-end deal. Right. But I do, yeah, that definitely why there was, like, that lawsuit with Scarlett Johansson and a couple others against Disney, because they were like, dude... <laughs> You, you, Give us our money. <laughs> well, they also said they weren't going to do that, and then they did it. So it's yeah. like they kind of reneged on their <laughs> their deal. I um, hadn't heard anything about this movie at all until Tony was like, I'm going to watch the new Predator movie. And I was like, cool, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing I knew ahead of time was that I think I saw like that they, they showed it at Comic-Con and that there was like positive oh. reviews, and then that was it. Do they always show movies at Comic Con? No. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that was a thing that happened. I know they show a lot of trailers. Yeah, I knew about the trailers, but I was like, oh, I didn't know they showed actual movies. I wonder what that movie going experience would be like. Yeah, I have no idea. Are you like standing in a room packed with a bunch of smelly nerds? <laughs> well, or maybe it was like just a small screening of like industry types and stuff like that as well, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. But either way, I booted it up and gave it a watch. And I was going to tell Devin a bit about it because I was going to do a bit of a solo record. But then I was like, ah, I think it'd be fun. Because Devin, like, how much do you know about the Predator franchise, really? So I think I saw the... Did the first movie have Arnold Schwarzenegger in it? Correct. Okay. So I think I watched the first Predator movie at, like, 2 a.m. at our friend Sean's house in like 2004 with a bunch of people who were talking over it and might have slipped through part of it. I do remember that Sean got really mad at me because I was like, 
why do they keep putting phallic things in their mouth? Because they just always have like, like banana <laughs> cigars in their mouth the whole movie. <laughs> It feels like, it's like this feels very it feels homoerotic and then he got really bad. <laughs> yeah, that's like unintentional stuff from the eighties, right? I know, but like watching it like it just that's all I could see. I'm like, why do they keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's what I know about the Predator franchise. I think that the Predator can turn invisible or something. Yeah, correct. It, it's an alien. Yeah. And also it it fights an alien and alien versus predator. Yeah. Have you seen any of those or no? No. Why oh, would wow. I? <laughs> I don't know. I assumed, like I said, I assumed you probably had seen Predator because, again, mutual friend Sean, but yeah. you haven't even seen like the sequel or any of the newer ones. It's possible that I've seen a, like one of the sequels, but I have no memory of it if I did. Mm. There was one with like Adrian Brody a few years ago. Yeah. I vaguely remember that, but I didn't see it. I think I maybe saw the trailer, or you mm. described it to me. <laughs> I I vaguely have a, like an image of Adrian Brody hiding in a tree, but I, yeah. I don't know if that's related to Predator or not. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> yeah, letting everyone down. I don't know anything about the Predator franchise. He's no, an alien. Yeah. There's more than one, right? More than one movie or more than one alien? More than one predator. Correct. It's a it's a race of a people's. And they go invisible. The, they kind of have dreads. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you cover yourself in mud, they can't smell you. Well, so their primary vision that we're led to believe is infrared. So supposedly the mud would block human stuff. But I think Mythbusters busted that myth. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, it makes for a great movie set piece when Arnold does fight the Predator at the end of the first one, yes. Um, There's, like, another guy with him, right? Like, his boyfriend, like, a, a black guy that's, like, strong. Is his boyfriend yeah, in that movie. Car- well, Car- Carl Weathers. Um, well, because the movie starts, it's a whole group of people, and they all get killed off, till it's just Arnold. Oh, he gets, oh, that must be sad, because all his friends died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's, you know, military man, and... He's, he's going to fight to the end. I know. I know that men in movies can't express their feelings unless they're holding a gun, which is why we have the Fast and Furious franchise. Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it'd be like, Vin Diesel would be like, I'm sad. And they'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can't man up, dude. And then if you're holding a gun and he says, I'm sad, then they're like, we're your family. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the best breakdown I've ever heard of that series. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Yeah, no, I literally haven't seen any of those movies, just like parodies and reviews and like, you know, whatever, and clips. And I'm just like, wow, that sounds like the most ridiculous franchise ever. Yeah, you can't, as a man, listen, I know that it's late in life that you're learning this, but as a man, you cannot have express any feelings unless you're holding a gun or driving a car down. <laughs> you gotta be on the edge. <laughs> well, and so I came into this with the opposite of, from Devin's knowledge. I've seen uh-huh. all the Predator movies. I've read Predator books. I've read Predator comics. <laughs> oh, I didn't know they made books of it. Yeah, there was like, you know, some small, small amount of novels and stuff like that. Uh, one of the cool ones that sort of was the inspiration for Alien versus Predator was um, actually a human. She is brought up in the Predator race. It becomes a hunt, part of a hunting party. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. It's a good book, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when you said books, the first thing that popped in my head, and like... Was coloring books? <laughs> no, no. This doesn't... <laughs> the first thing that popped in my head was, what if they... Just took like Jane Austen. <laughs> they did like <laughs> like a replace word. <laughs> they took Mister Darcy and just replaced it with the Predator. That's <laughs> 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 so stupid. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't know what's gotten into me. <laughs> oh, that's all right. <laughs> 
but yeah, so like there are there's a lot of predator media out there, and uh, like you said, they do fight aliens, and there was a couple movies. That's they're all right, uh, but they're the comics were pretty good, and so yeah, I was curious coming into this. The only thing I knew was that it was a prequel and that it took place in the past, but I didn't know. So this takes place in the 1700s, 1719 to be specific, I believe. And it could just be a Jane Austen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. continue. <laughs> and it takes place, like I said, it's a indigenous tribe. Uh, they are particular. I, I think that, you know, they took some liberties. They're per- depicted as Comanche, but I think uh, someone was like, the Comanche didn't live there during that period of time, but whatever. <laughs> At some point as well, near early in the movie, they hunt a lion, which I was like, I don't think there's lions in North America. Maybe I was wrong, but... <laughs> I'm pretty... Hmm. I don't think there's lion. Was it a mountain lion? That could... They, no, it wasn't really depicted as a mountain lion, but that would also make sense, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah maybe we'll go with that. But okay. we follow our protagonist. Her name is Naru. And she's, like, you know, doing some gathering in the beginning of the movie, but you could tell as well that she's not happy with that life, right? I think they did a good job with, like, the look of everything and the, like, the money was there. I couldn't find the budget numbers on this because they just didn't tell us because it's on streaming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, she, you know, wants to do the hunting. Tribe's like, you're not a hunter. And her brother, older brother, is kind of like, uh, they talk about, uh, basically it's like this, the ceremony she wants to do. I think it's called uh, the katamiya, where it's like you go and you hunt something that like can hunt you, right? Okay. And so she's talking about that and how she wants to do that ceremony. And they're like, nah, that's, it's not for you. Like that's, it's too out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we get some good setup early on. Like she's shown gathering some stuff and some knowledge of medical stuff and some herbs, you know, how she kind of looks at things a little differently. Cause like they're her, her and her brother are standing near a river and they're going to shoot like a bird. And He's telling some story, and so she kind of just like has it doesn't do the shot, and then he just quickly shoots it, and he's like, "Ha, ah, I got it!" And she's like, "I was waiting for it to cross the river because now you got to go all the way over there, <laughs> kind of thing." <laughs> <laughs> so she's yeah, it's kind of depicted. She's you know she thinks a little different, kind of what happens. I liked this was the ship just shows up, and like while she's out gathering and she's kind of practicing her tomahawk throwing, and she's like hunting a deer, she doesn't get it, and she ends up at like this. Um, kind of ridge line and the ship is going through the clouds and all you see is like the ship is cloaked and but all you see is it's like it's jet uh propulsion and it's going through the clouds oh cool and so she kind of takes that yeah she's like oh i saw like the thunderbird sign and she's like something's happening and i kind of i really like that and as it kind of pans up the credits kind of come down or come up and say like pray and i was like oh that's it was nicely done <laughs> nice so you see some a little bit, the predators out there. You, you don't see it, of course. It's just like out there wandering around invisible. And it kind of kills a couple things like a snake and, you know, nothing major there. A lion, this, the aforementioned lion, <laughs> attacks <laughs> attacks somebody in the tribe. So, uh, you know, the hunters are like, we got to go out and find him. Also, maybe kill the lion. And so she, like, goes along with. Can I and, pause for just a second? Sure. Why would they pick a lion? There's like so many predators in North America. Like that makes <laughs> no. sense. Like bears. Well, a bear is going to come up later. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I about also... like I don't know a cougar? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Again, maybe I was just maybe they used the word lion, but you're right. Maybe they could have been a mountain lion or a cougar or something something along those lines. But when they kept saying lion, that's where I was like. A lion? <laughs> Did they, like, write it for Africa? And then, like, they couldn't get, like, it was too expensive to film there, so they moved over here. Like... <laughs> well, and one thing that is true about the movie, and this was something, there was a Comanche language version, which I was like, oh, that'd be sweet, like, because, you know me, I'd be all over that, because subs versus dubs. Uh, but yeah. it turns out it was just, like, a dubbed version. It wasn't actually, like, a full Comanche language version. Oh. Um, also, it wasn't on Disney Plus. It's on like Hulu, apparently. So uh, yeah. I was kind of disappointed in that because I was like, oh, I'd totally watch this in Comanche. <laughs> right. Why wouldn't they just do that? Like, just have subtitles or even like just have like minimal talking and just let us figure out what's going on. 
Sure. Well, <clears throat> so what they kind of did is they their dialogue is in English and with the occasional indigenous word, like I said, like the katamia and a couple other things like the they talk about like a herb and they're like they use the word like titska, I think, or something like that kind of thing. But then when later in the movie they encounter some like uh, French trappers and stuff like that, they don't mm-hmm. understand them. They're talking in French. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And there's no subtitles. They're just talking in French. <laughs> did you understand them? Because you can kind of understand French. Yes and no, it was pretty butchered. <laughs> but nice. uh, yeah. so, yeah, you're right. Like I was kind of like, I, I obviously they did it because a North American audience doesn't like subtitles. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know, I know. But you're right. The bear, there's a bear coming up. Okay. Um, so yeah, Type as they're hunting bear. the lion, they find a predator track, just like a big giant foot. And uh, a couple of the guys are like, ah, it's just a bear. That was like, she's like, why is it standing on a hind legs then? And why did it kill a snake, but not like eat it? <laughs> she's like, it doesn't make sense. And they're just like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um so they find the guy who was hurt by the lion. She used some, some herbs on him and stuff like that. We get a setup of the the yellow titska, I think it was called, how it cools the body down. It cools the blood, she says, right? Because mm-hmm. that's going to come into play. Because <laughs> they're thermal vision. Correct. <laughs> uh, that's uh, clever girl. Indeed. Her brother's like, hey, go with him. He needs you kind of thing. And she's like, no, I want to come with you to, like, hunt the lion. And he's like, no, go back to the tribe. So she goes with, or maybe that's when she finds the, yeah, she finds, like, the predator track. And she's like, this is way more messed up. I'm going back to find my brother. So they go. It's her, her brother, and another guy. And he's like, all right, we're kind of near its den. And she's like, hey, we'll set up a trap situation where we can bait him to this tree. And the other guy, you know, he's like, Psh that's stupid let's not do that and then her brother's like no that's a good plan we're gonna try it that way and they do like the classic like she's on the tree with the other guy and her brother is like setting up the the bait and the guy's like like all boasting how it's like you can't do nothing we're gonna take this lion down you suck and then he just like off screen just gets his gets ripped off the tree (laughs) 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 like just from below basically because it's like the way it's framed so he just gets owned the mountain lion jumps on the tree with her She's, you know, tries a bow shot, doesn't work. So she's got the spear. They basically like, she slips off the tree and throws the spear at the same time while the lion jumps at her. And this was kind of really crazy where she lands, hits her head on a rock and it just goes immediate black. Oh. Yeah, I was like, whoa. And then it just cuts to, she just wakes up in a tent and I was just like, what the heck? <laughs> Cause we're all like, what, what is happening, <laughs> right? <laughs> Turns out her brother rescued her went back out to fight the lion and she's like oh i gotta go back out there like he needs my help and she's like uh her her mom was like no he he brought you back he clearly doesn't need your help <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh he her brother um whose name is tabe he comes back and he's got the lion head and like the lion cor- corpse and you know covered in blood and uh, and she's she's kind of jelly because he's like yeah you know we did it and she's like no you you, you you did it without me. Like we had this plan and he's like, you're right. You suck. <laughs> well, he doesn't say that, but he's just basically like, yeah, I did it. We didn't need you. No go. So she's kind of down about this whole incident. <laughs> and so she's like, well, you know what? I'm going to go out and find whatever it was that made that big track. So she just leaves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she like, you know, she gets some gear and she just heads out. And again, this was some of the, some nice stuff here. We get some nice nature stuff and some great shots. Uh, she decides to, this was kind of funny to me. She, cause she's been throwing her tomahawk, right? Like the, she's, she's trying to hunt a rabbit. She throws the tomahawk, you know, if it misses, the, she's got to get the tomahawk before she's able to throw it again, right? Mm-hmm. So she winds a rope out of like tree bark and then puts it on the tomahawk so she can like get it back. And so they do kind of like a, you know, a action sequence where she's like practicing it and stuff like that. And I'm like, Good job. You invented a weapon that the Chinese have been using for a couple thousand years. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> a weapon on a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah. No, but so, yeah, so she, they saw her practicing with it. And then, you know, the next they cut to, she's got some rabbits on her back because she's managed to catch some with her new, her new weapon. And we get a little bit with the predator where he sees a wolf attacking a rabbit. And he also gets in the action. Because he's like, hey, try, you know, he's, the predator's trying to fight something. 
So he fights the wolf, takes it down <laughs> with minimal effort. <laughs> Sorry, just um, can you give me a lore check real quick? I, um, do predators just hunt because they like hunting? So generally speaking, when like the movie ones, uh, basically they they usually go because it's like to test themselves, right? Okay. So if the young ones go for like the hunt because then they're like gonna go find and hunt something that can like kind of like the Katamiya as explained earlier, where it's like you're gonna hunt something that can hunt you to prove that you're the ultimate hunter. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's 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 not really like just for sport. It's to find the ultimate like prey and to like test yourself, right? Okay. Cool. That's kind of like yeah, like there's that's kind of the depiction there's of some this. some parallels going on. Correct. <laughs> Ooh, it's like they're filmmakers. Almost, like there's filmmakers, yeah. Um, <laughs> she's out there, Predator's out there, and eventually what happens is, is she, this was also something that I was thinking where drone technology is obviously coming far, and man, it must be so nice to set up like overhead shots now, because again, we get some overhead shots of her when she's in the forest, as well as she falls into like a mud pit and it's just like immediately they just have overhead shot and you're just like man comparatively to the past we had to set up big cranes and everything now you're just like yeah get a drone up there <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah uh so yeah she falls in like a mud pit but she uses her new tomahawk invention with the rope to like help get her out nice yeah she encounters a bear so she's up on a a ridge there's a bear down below and she's like all right i can line this up get a good shot on this bear but because she fell in the mud, her bow string slips. Oh. And then the bear is angry and comes charging up, <laughs> right? Uh-oh. But she has, a, she has a dog companion, and it's pretty pretty smart, and it helps distract the bear. Ch the bear chases the, the dog away from her. And so she kind of, like, comes down. She's got the bear in her sights, whiffs that bow shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I like this. She like whiffs the bow shot and the bear's still charging at her. And so she immediately just runs and dives into the river into like a beaver uh, dam. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, that was pretty smart and clever. Like, but just immediately just like, this has gone wrong. <laughs> Time to run, yeah. yeah. So she gets in the beaver dam and then the bear kind of like, you know, comes up and is like smashing it. And then the predator shows up. It's invisible, but we get... So, because some water splashing on and everything like that, you can kind of see its outline. And this was something I did like as well, is that because it's in the past, its invisibility tech isn't as good. So Ooh. you can you can see its outline far more than you could in previous movies. Um, even, cool. yeah, even considering the technology we have now, like they could do it so much better, of course, <laughs> right? But yeah, so the predator shows up, fights the bear, which is pretty sweet. Um, okay. Yeah, and then takes down the bear, and like when he p punches the bear at the end and it like smashes into the beaver dam and he picks up the carcass and he's kind of doing like a, a celebration thing and the blood's just kind of dripping all over him. And so <laughs> then we get like a better view of its outline and how it kind of looks. It's pretty neat because the design, it's like it's more slim, it's more lithe comparatively to previous Predator generations we've seen, has less, you know, fancy tech, which again, because it's 300 years in the past. <laughs> uh-huh. And so, yeah, she just books it. <laughs> She's like, oh, God, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, like, no, no, no good, no good. <laughs> yeah, basically, she, like, gets in the river and just starts, like, swimming away. And he kind of sees her. Again, a little bit of thermal. You get, like, her head bobbing in the water. Uh, then she encounters her own people uh, who were sent out to find her. And, of course, she's like, dude, I found this thing. It's giant. It just killed a bear. And they're like, you're making some stuff up here. <laughs> right? <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, a hysterical woman. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Don't believe anything she says. <laughs> yeah, she uses, like, a word to mean, like, monster or, like, you know, something like that where it's, like, a demon kind of thing. And they're like, you saw a demon in the woods? They're like, whatever. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so they don't believe her, though, of course. And they're like, well, doesn't matter. We're taking you back. And this was kind of crazy, too, because she she fights them like physically. She's like, no, I'm going back out there. And so she gets into a fight with like the main kind of jerk guy. Mm -hmm. And they just like she they fight back like they, they beat her up. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. Yeah, I was kind of like, whoa, <laughs> kind of thing. Because, yeah, at, at, you know, they kind of mutually beat each other up. And then he's like, fine, get out of here then. And then she turns around. And then, like, another dude sucker punches her in the face, and then he just, like, clocks her on the head. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> was yeah, it right? weird to watch that? 
it was well it was just kind of like again unexpected <laughs> oh yeah and i was just like wow again i was like this is a quality movie <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they got her tied up and they're going back to their village she's like you know no there's a thing out there it's terrible and they're by this log and then they hear some noises in the woods and so they're like oh you know they got the bows ready and there's some movement in the bush and they shoot and it's just like uh, I can't remember. It's like a skunk or a possum or something like that kind of thing. Something innocuous. <laughs> and then she's like, no, something is chasing it towards us. Obviously, it wouldn't just come out of the woods. And they're like, again, like, whatever. <laughs> and then we get some classic, the three laser dots on one of the guys. Uh-oh. Yeah. And he's like, kind of looking at himself and he's like, what? And then it's instead of the laser cannon, which is the classic, it's basically like um, like piercing arrows and just like, pierce into him, like three of them, just like chunk, 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 and he goes down, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah, there's like three of them and her, I think, and then they fight the predator. And this was something I also really did like as well, where the 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 tribes people, they like fight them, but they got spears and bows, but they're using like uh, tactics, like they fight together kind of a thing, you know, like, like one guy's in the front of them with a spear and kind of like, you know, doing some chanting or some distractions and then a dude comes from behind and just like you know slashes at him and then the other guy tries so they use some cool tactics to try to like fight the predator <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah it was something i actually really liked um because even close quarters they're still like yeah using their spears and you know they're completely overmatched of course but they're still trying so i really like that <laughs> and so she like gets her gear and watches like the fight happening because she's still tied up and she gets her gear and basically just again after he butchers like all of her friends she's just like pieces it <laughs> right yeah don't blame her <laughs> yeah, so she's getting her stuff and so she's running and she goes and she's running into like a field and one of her tribes people like grabs her and pulls her down he's like knows that something's chasing her kind of thing and he gets his bow ready and he's like okay yeah we got the like he's because he's got to come through the forest to us right and so she he's like i got it Again, we cut the predator vision. He's got the thermal vision and they're just sitting there glowing right in this field. <laughs> he does like the three dots on the person with the bow and Naru is like, no, he's got us and like hauls him out of the way and they just start booking it again. And this was again, another nice overhead shot situation where the predator just catches up and like takes down the one guy while she's like running away, but it's the parting of the grass as he, she's like running, <laughs> right? Oh, cool. He gets taken down, it's just her, and she runs into some woods, but then gets caught in a metal trap. Um, which was happened earlier, her, dog, her dog's tail got caught in a small trap earlier. So, like, you know, there's some trappers out there. Oh, yeah, she finds some, like, butchered uh, uh, buffalo as well. So it's like, there's some people out there, right? So, yeah, some trappers show up, conquer unconscious. And this is where, like I was saying earlier, they're all talking French and being all disgusting. There is like a translator guy, he comes up and so he's talking in English and how he's like, oh, I speak a lot of languages. You know, basically they're like, hey, we know something's killing some stuff, some people, you know, we want your help or we're kind of a thing. And she's just like, refuses to help. They have her brother and they start kind of like cutting into him, torture style a little bit. And that's a dick move. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way to describe it, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, we need your help. Help us, please. I'm going to fucking cut up your brother. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, we kind of cut to... So they're in kind of like a burned out area. So I, it's a, I guess it's assumed the trappers like burnt the forest in this area. And they're tied to a tree, uh, Naru and her brother, as bait, essentially, right? Oh, shit. Those guys are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so this was, a, again, a, um, just a, such a strikingly different visual situation because we've seen just greens and lush, and this is just grays and ash and Ooh. dead trees everywhere. So again, some nice visuals. So they're there, and there's some dudes on a ridge who are like, you know, with like a telescope, and they're like, okay, we're going to wait for this thing, and and it's bait, because they're, again, going off the assumption that it's just a mindless killer, right? Like, it's, that's not there to hunt. Right. They're set up. Because so they basically comically it comes from essentially behind those those guys that are on the ridge, <laughs> murders all of them, and then the horses go like charging off, and the dude with the telescope's like, "What the hell?" And he does like the turnaround, and he's just like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> right. <laughs> so he books it into the uh, into the clearing. He gets owned. I think he gets his, like a spear through the chest kind of thing. <laughs> and Good. yep, yeah. <laughs> well, 
and this is where it took an unexpected turn for me is like so he's the predator's kind of cu- walking around in there and his camouflage screws up because like all the ash is sticking to him right okay. so you get the, get the full reveal again i think but yeah you get the full reveal again and he's walking and then he gets like his i think he gets his like leg caught in a trap and then like he falls over and gets his arm caught in a trap and then some like tarps get removed and there's people there holding the trap and like on chains and so they start like pulling it and they're like yeah and they trip them down they throw like one of their nets on them and they're all just like yeah we got him <laughs> oh okay and they're like you know like yes and then the predator just like claw just goes like shing and just like stabs a dude <laughs> nice yeah this whole sequence so naru and her brother they're like talking about trying to get away and they eventually use one of the traps to like uh sever one of the ropes attached to their to their hands and so they can get away but this whole sequence was like the like the money shot style where we just get to see all the predator's gadgets <laughs> right Ooh. Yeah, so he like throws a thing and the dude gets caught in like the predator uh, like a, a net but it like it um cinches up and as it cinches up it's like made of some kind of material that cuts things so it just like cubes a dude we got that we get the shield on his arm we get to see that he you know blocks some firearms with it and this is of course just a classic like technology mismatch because some dudes have you know some muskets and stuff like that and they're all just like pew, 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 pew. they all take their shot and then he's just standing there and so they all start to try to reload again <laughs> <laughs> and of course he, they all just get butchered and good, good. yeah like the predator with that shield he shows like he picks up a dude and he just opens it and like cuts his head off <laughs> and uh, like I said, he, he's shooting like darts, and we also get this is a setup for later because again, the where the lasers go, or I think it happens again later, but yeah, like wherever his lasers go, like these this dart gun, like that's where the laser, like where the darts end up, right? Like it's like attached to his helmet. Oh, yeah. He's just butchering everybody. Naru and her brother just like again, they just escape out of there. Her brother's like, I'll go get those horses so we can get out, and she's like, I'm gonna go back to the camp to get my dog, <laughs> and it's like, all right. And yeah, one of the last things the Predator does is he like throws down these like three discs. You know, they count down as if they were a bomb, but we don't kind of see their effect. They just kind of open up and then there's like blades. And then it's like behind Naru as she's walking away and you just see some kind of like red lightning. <laughs> and then right. it's just over. And you're like, well, all those people are dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoever was left, nope. <laughs> They were bad people. It's fine. Yeah, they were clearly, you know, intruders and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, this is a, a great sequence for just like all the gadgets. <laughs> nice, nice. All the gadgets, all the butchery. And again, this is because in the past, right, like we, the tech wasn't there and the, you know, the tools weren't there to do something like this. Right. So uh, like in Predator 1, we don't really get a sequence like this where it, it just kind of goes all out with everything. Right. I don't recall. I just remember the cigars. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying, right? Like in Predator 2, there kind of is a, like, there's always like a new setup for, or a new situation when we see a new gadget, but this is just, like I said, it's just like all the gadgets. <laughs> nice, nice. So yeah, it leads back to like the camp. She's getting her dog back. There's still some people there. So she gets her tomahawk, goes on a kill spree, and she, yeah, she fights like three dudes. It's, it, again, good choreography, pretty cool moves. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, in there so she gets her uh, her dog back and then the translator guy he comes he was killed by the or his leg got chopped off by the predator sorry and he's mm-hmm. like hey you have medicine you know uh, i'll give you this gun and teach you how to use it if you just bandage up my leg and she's like all right so she's doing that and he teaches her how to use the firearm he ban- she bandages up his leg and she gives him some of that uh, the yellow titska there uh, like i was saying earlier and then the predator shows up Oh. She hides she hides behind a tree and the predator shows up and is walking through the camp and like walks right past that guy and she's like, What the hell? That guy's like sitting there and alive. And then the predator accidentally like steps on his like other leg or something like that and he makes noise and then the predator kills him. Oh. <laughs> just like just like Meatball. <laughs> meatball busting in. Hi buddy. You're gonna podcast? Do you have thoughts about prey? <laughs> But yeah, then her brother shows up, her and her brother kind of fight the predator a bit, like her brother doing the most stuff, because she's trying to use the gun, still isn't working well, but she like distracts him. Uh, again, see, this is like I said, the setup, like that her brother knocks off his helmet, and then the dart gun that he's using, 
it goes like where the lasers are going, right? So she 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 learns that <laughs> off this the sequence as well. Oh, cool. Uh, eventually, though, her brother dies. He, oh. he, he can't stand up to the predator. She escapes, and she eventually encounters like the head fur trapper guy. He's down yeah. by like the woods because he 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 booked out of the situation <laughs> earlier. <laughs> So he, she sees him down the way and she's like, again, going to use the gun. And then she's like, oh, no, wait, this isn't going to work. She gets an idea and, the, you know, they do a good kind of classic. Like he's like there washing up his hands or whatever. And she just comes out of nowhere, just like conks him on the head with a rock. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Later, it's dark. She's got a fire going and she's talking about, you know, hunting and predator and prey. And she's setting up to like fight. She cut off his leg. <laughs> oh, and cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she cut off his leg and she um, basically she's like, I'm going to use you as bait because I know that this thing isn't trying to just hunt it or it, like it wants to fight. And so mm -hmm. he still has a gun and she uses the the yellow titska, the medicine there to cool herself down. Ah. And yeah, the predator comes by and like walks right past her kind of thing to him, takes him down and she uses the gun. Shoots him in the back of the head. <laughs> nice. And knocks off his helmet and then steals the helmet and runs away. Oh, smart. Yeah. And this, this was kind of funny to me, of course, because, like I said, she literally just, like, shoots him in the back of the head. And the Predators are depicted as tough, of course. <laughs> but we're just, like, they just need to be as tough as they need to be for the script. Because I was like, dude just got shot in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it sets up a final showdown. She has the helmet. Yeah, he kind of comes along to where she wanted to go because she had, like, the leg and used the, the blood as, like, bait. And, yeah, they have a final showdown. Again, we use the, the Predator uses some of his tricks, like the shield. Like, she traps her under a rock with the shield. But to Ooh. get out of it, she, like, grabs one of his tusks and stabs him in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she used the tomahawk. They do, a, you know, the classic, like you said. She's in the tree. He's below her. And she jumps off the tree, you know, great glory shot and lands on top of him and just starts like hacking away with the, with the, the axe <laughs> <laughs> and, shoulder and stuff like that. Right. You know, so yeah, good fight, lots, like some tech and some, some tactics. What happens is, is that she had lured him to that mud pit that we saw earlier in the movie. Oh. And so he falls in the mud pit and she's at the end near like this uh, kind of fallen over tree and he gets out of the mud pit or kind of stands up and she's just kind of like, you know, being like, come on, do it kind of thing. And he brings up like the spear gun and shoots the spear, but she had set up the mask at that location. And so the spear misses her and then eventually bing in his dome. <laughs> 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 and then, yeah, takes him down. He goes down into the, into the mud pit. Uh, the final kind of sequence is she comes out of the woods. She's got his head. And she's kind of like redone her um, like war makeup with the predator's blood. So she's covered in like this neon blood, which is pretty badass looking. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, and she goes and then the tribe does like a, uh, you know, a, a victory song like they did for earlier in the movie when her brother came with the lion. Right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then the movie ends. Boom. Right there. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, totally perfect. <laughs> it sounds like. It sounds really cool because it seems like a movie that would work if it wasn't Predator. Right. You know, like if it was just like a monster in the woods, it seems sure. like it would still like be an interesting movie to watch. Yeah, because well, and that's what always the Predator kind of that's always what it's been. It's just like a slasher movie with a sci fi element. <laughs> Yeah, but it, I don't know, it sounds cool, like, the world building of, like, the tribes and everything sounds really interesting, and, like, the fur trappers, and, I don't know, it sounds cool. Yeah, I was, it was very unexpected to me when the fur trappers showed up, because I was expecting none of that, but I was You're also... Like, oh, no, white people. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it was, it was smart and good, because then, like I said, that whole sequence where he just unleashes all the gadgets, like you said, it's just on a bunch of, like, ostensibly bad guys, because it's like, who cares? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, it's just a bunch of fur trappers. We know they were terrible. So just, <laughs> just you, you go to town there, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it was really smart script wise. And uh, yeah, for me as well, like I really enjoyed it a lot because um, so, you know, some of the more later Predator movies, you know, they always try to do something bigger or expand it. But this was just like, nope, simple concept again. Uh, some people in the woods fighting mm -hmm. the Predator, <laughs> which I know that's 
you can't do that every time. And it's hard to write a scenario every time that is that, but that's what makes, that's the best part about Predator. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that idea of, of like putting it in the past, like setting it in the past and stuff is a good way to, to handle that. Yeah, and like I said, one thing I appreciated was not only, of course, the technology of the tribes was very low, but so was the technology of the Predator. Because like I said, uh, he doesn't have like, um, his, like normally has like shoulder plasma cannon and like, you know, more advanced uh, spear and like launcher technology, like all sorts of gadgets he just doesn't have in this, right? So I was like, that's cool. Because that's what I was kind of curious. I was like, what are they going to do for his tech? <laughs> all right. Yeah, it would have been really like, it would have made it bad if he was like more advanced because they could make him more advanced. Exactly, right? Like, so he was, of course, more advanced because they're a spacefaring race, but it wasn't, yeah, like they didn't have more advanced gadgets even. <laughs> no, I mean like more advanced than previous movies. Right, yeah, yeah, that would have made yeah. no sense. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was Prey. Like I said, I was pleasantly surprised, very much enjoyed the watch. I watched it like, uh, two days in a row, mainly because oh, wow. we were going to record, but then I was like, I'll watch it again. And I like sat through and watched the whole thing again, very much enjoyed it. I think for me, it's probably my third favorite Predator movie. No, oh, what's your first one? I, definitely Predator 1 is my first one. This one would be like pretty close with Predator 2. I like Predator 2 a lot. I think, you know, I got kind of a maybe a soft spot for it, but it's it takes place in LA. Um, and oh so, God, that's so yeah. stupid. No, no, it's pretty fun. And it's but the funniest thing about it is that it's set amongst like um Colombian and Jamaican like drug lords fighting. Oh my god. <laughs> and That's the so dumb dad. <laughs> I know. And the predator just shows up and just starts murdering everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then Danny Glover is our our protagonist. And then he's like trying to chase down what he thinks is just like a regular murderer until he finds out it's an alien predator. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. So anyway, and then and then I think, like I said, I think I would rank this one uh, up there as well. It's very enjoyable. Didn't they do? Wait, was that just comics where they did Predator versus Alien versus Ash from the Evil Dead? Yes, I think that sounds more comic. Okay, <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they like they've done like uh, Predator versus like Batman and like you know Predator what? versus. Yeah. Oh God, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's a really good. Like, if you watch a uh, um, Caravan of Garbage, they did a breakdown of it, and they're like, it's actually one of the most like entertaining comic reads around. <laughs> Comics are dumb. No. <laughs> well, they just they're a medium. You can explore anything you want. <laughs> any other any questions about the movie or Predator lore? I guess. Well, it sounds like it's like a small story that's executed well. Correct. <laughs> that's totally what it is. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's like, cool. Yeah, exactly. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, no. we're tell the small we need sto small stories. We don't need everything to be Thanos 2.0. Well, and, and the director on this, uh, Dan Treckenberg, he made 10 Cloverfield Lane. And I haven't seen the Cloverfield movies, but isn't that the one that's like in the bunker with like John Goodman and Mary Elizabeth Winstead? Yeah, I think that, I feel like Jay from Red Letter Media really liked it. Or he hated it. I, yeah. I think he talked about it. Sure. Well, and I was saying, like, because like you said, that's, again, a small movie where it's just like, in a bunker, three people, or whatever, right? Yeah, I like John Goodman a lot, too. Mm-hmm. He's fun. Yeah. He, he directed this. He also co-wrote it, I believe, with a person named Patrick uh, Eisen, A-I-S-O-N. Cool. I think I got that wrong but um yeah and like i said yeah mostly indigenous cast except for some of the people that come in like the uh some of the trapper people and stuff like that um, that's really cool yeah uh like i said i really enjoyed it i liked so many elements about it the only thing like i think for me one if i could have seen it in theater and two if i could have seen an actual comanche language version of it that would have been like the next level elevation for me but that's just me being weird <laughs> Do you think that if you had seen it in theater, it would have bumped it up in your Predator rankings? Possibly. Oh. Because, I mean, I've only ever seen Predator 1 in theater. It was one of those kind of like uh, midnight shows that somebody was, um, you know, back in the day. That it was like a $5 midnight showing nice. kind of thing. Yeah. Those are always, those are always fun. But yeah. uh, obviously, I've seen some of the more modern ones in theater. But I wish, like I said, I just wish I could have seen this one in theater. But that's... 
nature of the business, I guess. <laughs> oh, dickwad. Yeah. Dickwad is a good insult, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I would highly recommend people watch this movie. Um, even if you're not like a big Predator fan, like it's a good like almost introduction as well to the Predator concept because again, small sim- small scale is good. You have almost convinced me to watch it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It sounds interesting. I didn't know it was set in the past. I just assumed that it was going to be like, I don't know, set in the now with a bunch right. of Gen Zers. <laughs> Well, and one thing that I've ever, I was always, I assume this is probably like a studio thing, but it's just like the predators are a spacefaring race and the, the, the Robert Rodriguez predators takes place on an alien planet that it's always just like, yeah, why not just have a predator movie on an alien planet? It doesn't have to be on earth. Right. Oh, like, that'd be cool. Yeah. And it's like, either you could do, you, you could do it like in say it's the far future and there's a, you know, human space colonies, which is what the comics do. They're just like, yeah, there's humans out on this planet. And then, you know, a predator shows up and then the humans have some better tech and maybe they can fight back a little better. Right. Like it's the concept is right there. <laughs> it would be fun to do like a movie. Like it, maybe not predator, but just in general where you have like a super tough bad guy mm-hmm. and you set it up for like, a third of the movie that this bad guy is like unbeatable and then you have something even stronger just come in and like shoot it in the head <laughs> <laughs> yeah like an even bigger dinosaur exactly <laughs> <laughs> never mind i take that back my idea is dumb <laughs> it could work right but just... we need less of that we need less of that <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so there's three apex predators? <laughs> three apex predators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Predator versus Jurassic World. I'm sure. Well, and that, again, like that's what I was saying, like because predators are depicted, like I said, it's a warrior hunt, hunting culture that it's like, like, yeah, you could have them fight monsters, like not dinosaurs, but like some kind of sci-fi monster. That'd be no, cool. I want them to come into <laughs> specifically Jurassic World. Yeah. Fight Chris Pratt. And uh, Laura Dern, sure. Sam Neill, <laughs> and Jeff Goldblum. Or it's like, yeah, it, like it gets sent to like Jurassic Park, but then it doesn't realize that it's just like a theme park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. It's okay. We jump twenty years in the future. Okay. Jurassic Park is back open, but they've replaced all the all of the dinosaurs with robot dinosaurs. Mm. Okay? A predator shows up thinking that they're real dinosaurs because the robot technology makes them hot so they look like they're alive in thermal vision. And it's just (laughs) two hours of a predator hunting down pre-programmed robot dinosaurs. (laughs) Yeah, they're just meant to, like, walk somewhere and go, like, rawr, and it's just, like, stalking it. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. It's the perfect movie. And the twist is, is that the higher-up predators know that it's fake, but then they're like, this guy is terrible, we're just going to give him a win. (laughs) Yeah, they... they, they, It's it's actually just, like, office busy work for this one guy that they can't fire. <laughs> he's part of the union. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, Tim keeps fucking everything up. Uh, send him to the robot theme park. <laughs> Keep him busy for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> he's just the jankiest predator ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always one thing, and like I said, one thing I liked about this is that the predator, of course, it's really cool that it has all its gadgetry, but it's like it was nice to see it with a like sort of depowered in that sense um, mm-hmm. in that it, it can just blow everything up like instantly and win. So it was like, it still had to use some tactics and some wits and et cetera. Right. So yeah, I don't know. I really liked it. I like the predator concept as always. It's, it can be fun, but the, many of the movies that may have been bad. <laughs> well, it yeah. sounds like a good movie. I'm assuming you recommend it to people. Yeah. Like I said, I would highly recommend it to people and, even if you're not a fan of the Predator franchise, I think it's a good introduction to the Predator franchise. That's cool. 
Yeah. That's it. Let's pray. All right. Should, let's wrap up time. then. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and follow us on Instagram, Tome of Uselessness, and go to our website, tomeofuselessness.com, and send us an email, tomeofuselessness at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, topics, suggestions, if you are a predator and <laughs> we've misrepresented you, you can email us. <laughs> And uh, do it, or Dan will force you into a mud pit, and you will die. <laughs> right? Yeah, stay safe, and thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally going to put you in a mud pit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll have to build the said mud pit first, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> I just need a hose and some dirt. <laughs> <laughs> <In a pit. laughs> okay, thank you for listening. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs>